How are you doing? I'm doing good. Um, I'm chilling. I got a dog in my lap right now, and I'm ready to talk about some StarCraft. <laughs> so I'm doing pretty it good. It doesn't get much better. <laughs> yeah. We're chilling over here. Um, so, yeah, yeah, yeah man. Uh, so just so I have a... Before we get too crazy into talking about details and stuff, go ahead and give me a really quick... Um, like uh, explanation of yourself like what league are you in what race are you playing and um uh diamond or keep, diamond two uh, yeah. zerg okay um and i've gotten as high as uh three um but that that was just mostly like all ins and cheese so i'm playing pretty much all macro and um <clears throat> i think there's just things that i i'm doing like fundamentally wrong um because what i'd like to be able to do is get out of diamond just based on macro without getting into like crazy uh spell casters and control groups although i do those as well um yeah i'm just kind of stuck in diamond two okay uh do you have like a a matchup you would say is like your weakest matchup overall that you want to talk about today or you kind of want to talk about a generalized like so i i don't want to make this question too weird i would recommend probably talking about one matchup but if you really want to talk about overall, like multiple matchups, we totally can. It's not something that you can't do. Um, but I would just say there's a lot of depth we can take into one matchup. So if there is a matchup you're looking to really talk about, I that'll probably give you a lot of resource for yourself there to to take from and to always watch again and stuff like that. But yeah, do you have do you have a replay prepared or, that, or something? Yeah, I sent you a replay of a pro, uh, Zerg Protoss. Um, okay. And honestly, I'm starting to get more comfortable with this matchup, but uh, and, and Zerg Zerg is the one that I am the least comfortable with, but I'm like okay with that, I guess, for the most part, because they're just kind of uh, crazy matches every time. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm cool with looking at this Protoss replay and um, maybe just talking about that matchup. Did you send it to me on Discord, or did you send me on an email? I think it's in an email, but I can probably find the link here. Cause if if you I am looking for it and I can't I can't find it. Is it? Okay. Is, are you you're uh, just making sure 100 percent you're Jim G right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm not gonna say your last name, but uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I'll just like fully like your birth your date of birth is your social security number. <laughs> I could lose my job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I I got it. Uh, I found it. All right. So I'm gonna open it and then uh, I'll show you my screen on uh, Discord. So you can see my perspective of what I'm looking at. So you don't even need to log in. And then, uh, yeah. So uh, before we get started, though, one, one more question for you. And that is, do you want to have like a specific style? Do you have a style in mind that you want to like approach and play? Like really like work yeah. towards? And I, I probably learned some of this from watching your grads to GM. And then just trying to copy builds from like uh, <laughs> stupidly trying to copy like Serral's openings. I try sure. to play responsive macro. So for the most okay. part, that's my style. Sure. Okay. So we're going to, uh, if your build here looks inefficient in certain ways, we'll talk about. Now, let me just say, I'm going to say this. I'm going to give us like uh, an idea here for what we can do for the rest of the lesson. And you can tell me if this sounds good to you. But we can. Um, we can do a lot of discussion as to what a good responsive macro build as to what you're going for here would look like and then talk about what you're doing and how to fix that and stuff like that. And once we finish it, I will give you, before we finish the lesson, I'll give you, like, I'll do a game then live right now where I'll just give you, like, a build order that you can then use and it will be, like, something you can emulate and we'll talk about, like, how it could branch if you see certain things and stuff like that. Does that, does that sound good or... What do you think? Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool, 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 man. Cool, cool. Okay. So, ZVP, first overlord. Definitely need to get that shit ASAP going to the base. You did. Good shit. Uh, and I we'll, can't, right now, I can't see your screen. It's like loading. Oh, really? Um, so, okay. Cl click on uh, the top of Discord and then make sure okay. it's uh, not on Vibe. Make sure it's on like the. You, if you click it, it'll probably have like three windows. It'll have vi two vibes and then one Jimson. Okay, let me see. It's like in the see. in the message we have together, like above it where the, the actual call is. Yeah. Or try double clicking it even. 
Because you might be like full screened on. Because is it? Oh, I see is what you're it, yeah, it might be like full screened on Vibe for you, which is just like my frog thing. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Uh, and then there's another Vibe, and it's just like showing these two blocks loading. Oh really? Yeah, I'll, I'll turn it off and I'll turn it on. Cool. How about now? Yeah, I got you now. Sweet. Okay. Yeah, that was weird. Uh, but yeah, anyways, you can you can see my screen moving around and stuff in StarCraft. I can. I don't know if you responded. I couldn't hear you if you did. <laughs> Sorry. Jim. I might have lost him. He might be lagging. I can't hear you right now. I don't know if you can hear me. You can hear me. Okay, good. But yeah, I can't hear you right now. Uh, try, try just disconnecting from the call and reconnecting to it. Maybe that'll fix it again. I'm not sure. <coughs> <laughs> Yo. Are you back? I I see you, but I don't know if I know you can I think you can hear me still cuz you're typing to me. But Yeah, can I can hear you, I can I can hear you now, yeah. Okay, sweet. Okay. I don't know. The Discord's being wonky right now. <laughs> yeah, it is. All right, so you you can see my screen on StarCraft. You're all good here if I start going? Yep. Okay. Got you. Yep. All right, so one of the big things, with especially with the responsive macro, is we're going to talk about a lot is going to be your overlord scouting, and we'll talk about your ling scouting, because without those two things, it's going to be really hard to accomplish that for sure. Okay. Uh, so far, your build is fine. You went for a 16 hatch. You did that thing that some people like to do where they go forward, see if they're getting probe blocked that's totally fine nothing wrong with that uh everyone has a style for that shit but as long as you get the hatchery down early then it doesn't really matter you're going for gas before pool this is fine I'm, the only reason why it's fine is because you did it with still maintaining your saturation on your minerals so that's still good uh you're not like pulling off early for that shit i don't, the only thing i would say though about going gas before pool is really make sure you don't rip off the gas off the mineral line to fill up the gas like Fill up the gas with new drones, which is, it looks like that's what you're doing, so. Very, 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 very good, if that's the case. <coughs> I, st I started doing this now against Protoss out of frustration, just taking a third hatch at 19. Yeah, you do? Yeah, is it with this drone I'm right about, here? Yeah, I'm about to do I was trying to make it so he couldn't see me leave. Okay, so I actually wasn't sure, I was going to comment on that in a second, and I wasn't sure if you were scouting for cannons. Like if you were paranoid that the probe is over here or something, and then you were like, okay, you better not be building a pylon right now. If you want to go for a, a, a 19 hatch, honestly, don't take that gas. Like you might think to yourself that you're going to meta the Protoss a little bit by taking your gas. And the, maybe the Protoss has like a different reaction or something like that. Like, oh, it's standard, but it's really not. But in reality, you're going to fuck your own economy so hard if you take a third hatch and a gas. You won't ever make, like your queens are going to be super delayed if you would do all of that. You're totally right. I, I was going to ask you about that because my creep spread starts so bad in this game. Yeah, well, you, like you, you, you can barely afford two hatches and a queen on both hatcheries and then, you know, losing your larva. But if you actually add a third hatchery to that, you're going to have a really hard time spinning your larva again. <coughs> You'll also have a really hard time making your queens. So, like, you're going to have to prioritize one or the other. You're either going to spin your larva, which is what you should do. Uh, and then you're not going to have queens, so your larva is going to be super delayed as well, because you're not going to be injecting for a long time. Uh, and the third hatchery isn't really like going to make the trade-off if it's not having a queen. Because a hatchery without a queen is not nearly as good as a hatchery with a queen. Um, so yeah, it's just, it, the queens are vital here, and delaying them heavily because you took a gas is rough. If you actually wanted to go three hatch gasless, that's kind of scary versus adepts. Like, it's going to be a lot more annoying for you to deal with for a lot longer uh, in the early game. But it's still doable. You can still make it work. But it would it honestly would need to be gasless, in my opinion. Okay, no, that makes so much sense because 
the only this build has worked for me except for against early adepts because I have only one queen to start. My creep spread has been really bad, so that yeah. kind of answered that for me. Like why? Well, the the crazy thing is is two bases operating at 100% efficiency is more than three bases operating at sub efficiency, which is exactly what this is. This is like three bases being worth like one third of what it's supposed to because your larva is going to get delayed. Your Queens are going to get delayed and your gas is going to fuck you so hard here. So that's, and that's four drones that's committed to this because one builds it three mine it when that could be uh, extra saturation, which would still be really good on your main right now. And it could transfer to your natural. And that would just like, basically the difference of minerals you would have right now would be seriously like an extra 200 minerals. If you never took that gas. That makes total sense. And I'm about to like, so I've also been always getting overlord speed, so it's like double s screwing myself with three bases now because I'm gonna leave guys on gas till I have enough for yeah overlord speed too. So when it comes to overlord speed, I'm not gonna lie. As weird as it sounds, unless you want to go for bandling drops, I would recommend not getting overlord speed, even for reactive play. Uh -huh. uh, and the reason why is we'll talk about a lot of scouting things you can do with zerglings. Um, and like how they can be effective but like overlord speed getting into someone's base realistically by the time you need an overlord to be in their base it's like right now for the opener because you want to see what they build post cyber core and a lot of protesters will just open with that they're not going to hide their tech forever they, some do but if they have a stalker like chrono boost out and kill your overlord before they build it but then you can still there, there's strategies you can do which we can talk about in a minute to like can't like counter that and realistically by the time the protoss has uh, all in going if they if you're still confused as to what it would be with time which we'll talk about as well you could just overseer scout them and be like okay what are you doing and then figure it out but like third bases and zergling scouts are so it's so easy to read protoss over every other race and again we'll, we'll get there soon uh but for now we'll keep talking about your opener uh but yeah zergling scouting is so 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 it's it, by far the most important against protoss out of all three matchups Okay. If you want to react, yeah. If you if you want to play reactive, that it's against Protoss, it's it's very predictable. Okay, so you see a core, see a gateway, pretty standard. Core finishing around like two fifteen is pretty standard as well, like roughly. And then uh, you see, you know, you got your third base going. You got one queen. Spinning your larva. I'm glad you're spinning your larva, but again, like we talked about, the like, gas is going to fuck you pretty hard on the second one, the second queen, that yeah. is. Okay, so this overlord right here. Now let's come back to this. So we already kind of adjusted your build. I think it'd just be better if you went for two gas, delayed third at like 30 supply or like 28 supply, or you just don't take a gas at all until you have your third base down. And then after you start three queens, start a gas as well. That would be the other way to do it, in my opinion. But now with your first overlord, I highly recommend you dive this overlord into the base and sacrifice it if need be. I think I 100% think information is more value right now than this overlord is at 100 minerals. And there's a lot of information that comes from a lot of things. So a lot of times you can tell what a Protoss is doing without even scouting into their base. You still should, but like, for instance, I haven't seen this guy play this game yet, okay? I have no idea what Rhino did this game. But I'm going to hit play right now. And we haven't looked at his base yet. I have no, no, no build shit on right now. But if I were to guess what Rhino's doing right now, based on the core in the gateway, I would say Rhino. Chrono boosting out. Obviously, he's chrono boosting out the gateway. But he's not making a single thing on the core. I'm already going to assume that this is either going to be a stalker or an adept. It's always going to be a stalker or an adept. And I'm going to assume that there's another pylon probably like right there. And he's got a fucking stargate. That's what I would think. So if we if you park the overlord over here, and I'll tell you why in a second, but now that you're parking the overlord overlord over here, and now you don't see any info, if we look at everyone's vision and we were to see what you could have seen with this overlord if it just went up to the left, we see it's not exactly where I said it was, but it is a pylon with a stargate. So it's standard. Well, he did a standard Stargate. Now, people can deviate and look at, make it look standard and not do standard. But most people are going to make it look standard and actually do standard because uh, <coughs> it's just more efficient to play standard. It's not efficient to like waste money for no reason. Now, here's why I assumed that's what he was doing. And this is how I got there. 
If your opponent's player, let's a core finish. And then you can see what a, if you know what the graphic of a building looks like when it is and when it isn't building something that is good. Like if you don't know that, you should learn that right now, especially against Protoss. It's good against all races, but it's really, really, really important here, okay? Oh. And you so you have a cyber core right now that is finished. And you can tell by how fast the discs are spinning, all six of them. There's like five on the outside and one on the inside in the middle of the inside. That is an inactive core. And if we watch it for a second, we'll speed it up to when he actually starts using it. I'm sure he's going to do it. There, uh, so that's just started right there, right? So we'll back it up a few seconds to like 27 or some shit. And now you'll see the difference of what a core looks like when it's actually active. And this is how you play reactive as Zerg. You have to see these things and know these things. Because this means something more than what the building says it is. So if we look at now, if we look, if you look at the core, just stare at the core again. No movement, no movement. Get ready for it. And it's about to start right now. And now there's a lot of movement. The cores are spinning. The other cores are flashing. And um, it's actually not exactly what I said it was going to be. But the core in the middle is spinning. And the other ones are like doing this like half rotation. But they're all lighting up and shit. It's like saying, yeah, it's it's this is under construction. It's researching. And there's a reason why he didn't start that right away. It's because he has no intentions of doing a warp gate all in. If this, like, just think about it like this for a second. Okay, this is where this is how I'm getting this logic here. This is how you should think about the game if you want to play reactive. Is Protoss going to go for the fastest possible proxy gateway pylon or proxy warp prism, like fly a prism across the map and use it to do like a Zealot all in, or to do an Adept all in, or to do a Stalker all in? If he's not even prioritizing warp gate, chances are probably no, because. That'd be like saying, are you going to go for a Link Bane all-in and then just delay your Bane Link Nest by 30 seconds for no reason? Probably not, right? right. Like, So it, yeah. so he's he's delayed Warp Gate massively. And you have to think about why. So Protoss has options, right? They have Robo as an option, they have uh, Council as an option, and they have Stargate as an option. And out of these three options, the only build... Uh, so Robo can be self-sufficient if they go for, like, let's say, Disruptor Drops or, like, a Colossus Drop. It's just, it's really less common, even though it could still be a thing. I don't know how many times you play that in your own games, but I feel like I personally play a robo drop player one out of a hundred games. It's very rare. Yeah, it's not often either. Yeah. So if you think about, okay, what doesn't need warp gate? That could be tech that Protoss can use to attack and have it be standalone. Stargate's perfect. The Stargate does not, need to be, does not need to be supported by anything on the ground because it's self-sufficient. So the odds of a Protoss going Stargate when they don't get a Warp Gate is like 90% or above. It's super high. It's just standard play. So you're playing the... So the way you play a Reactive properly is you play to the odds of what is possible. That That is going to give you the best odds of always having the right guess and the right assessment of what's happening. So if you looked at this and you were like, probably a Stargate, it would make sense. And then if you look at also the Chrono Booster Gateway, again, it's either a Stalker or it's an adept. Now here's something as well for reactive play that you can learn that's pretty in depth, that's important, that changes things. If you scout it into his base right now at 212, if you turn to the left and we're like, let's go deep into his base and find out what the hell's going on here. If a Protoss player starts chrono boosting his gateway and building unit at like 213, and it, it, you, you should know it's either an Adept or a Stalker. Nobody is ever going to open up with a Zealot when the core is done and Chrono boosted out. They would have made it before that. And no one's gonna, going to make like a Sentry first because that's super risky to all ends. It'll just die. Sentries are really crap by themselves. So the chances of it being a Stalker or as an Adept, again, is like 99% chance here. So that's what, playing to the odds again. And now a Stalker and Adept both have a 30-second build time which gets reduced by one third if Chrono boosted, which means it has a 20 second build time if it's Chrono boosted. So this is important to know this because if you get if you scout he, the second his gateway went live in production, if he doesn't Chrono boost it, 30 seconds go by. If your Overlord doesn't start getting attacked by a Stalker within like one or two seconds of that, it's an Adept and it's starting to cross the map. If you, however, if your Overlord does get attacked within, like, let's say 33 seconds, because it's like a 30 second build time, give it like three seconds for the Stalker to run up to the Overlord, it's a Stalker. And here's like, a great way you could abuse that would be 
if you lose an overlord to a stalker, you could just make drones and not give a fuck because you know what a stalker is suppo supposed to shoot you. But if it's a if if it's not a stalker shooting your overlord and you know when a stalker should have been shooting your overlord, you can now make lings just before his adept arrives. So when his adept arrives and he tries to shade into your base, your lings spawn like as the shade would have finished if it does. And you can just get right on it and kill it right away. And you don't have fucking like six lings or four lings just standing there for no reason for every single game because it's reactive play. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, so you would want to just like make an assessment to like the time on the clock for that to really know. And then another another, another tendency of players is if a stalker... So I'm going to ask you a question here and I'll, if you get it wrong or whatever, it doesn't matter. I just want you to think about it and I'll tell you what I think after. But if a Protoss player makes a stalker first, what do you think they're trying to do? Trying to hide something from me. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's 100% correct. A Protoss player who makes a stalker first wants the Overlord out of their base immediately so they can hide shit. Which means, generally speaking, all in or tech. That's usually what it's going to be. Doesn't always mean it's going to be that, but again, if we're playing to the odds, somebody goes stalker first is usually going to do a two base timing in one way or another. It's going to be like an all in version of it, or it's going to be like some type of a tech, like Dark Templar opener or some shit like that. But a player who opens up a depth first doesn't give a fuck what you see, and they're going to be more likely to play standard. So someone who goes a depth first is not going to play with the mindset of, I really want to make you die to my attack. And I want you not to know what's happening until it kills you. Instead, the way they're going to play the game is they're going to try to throttle you. Throttling and like, so like one way to play Protoss is you literally just delete your opponent with surprise. And another way you play Protoss is you throttle them and you wear them out. Like you shave off edges to then make it to where even though they know what's happening, they can't stop it. So that's exactly what Adepts do. And that's exactly what like Oracles do. If they can like get in, kill drones and not die, that's amazing. And it, all it does is it slows down your overall build so much that like you just fall behind and then you can't really catch up anymore. You can't like keep up with them. Then they could just then it doesn't matter. You're like, oh, I know you're gonna attack me right now, but I can't stop it. That's like how he's. It looks like that's how this guy wants to play this game. So I fully expect that if there's a void ray, he's probably gonna go kill overlords and maybe like harass your creep. If it's an oracle, he's gonna try to kill your drones. Odds are higher. It, it is diamond league, but I would say if this was a like Masters Plus, I would say odds would be really high. This guy would probably go for a uh, Oracle. But Avoider can still be aggressive, so it still works. And right now, if you don't scout with the Overlord, like we talked about, and you don't have the uh, the knowledge that it's a that it's a, a Stargate period, you're not going to know how to react to this at all. You're just going to be like, he could be doing anything. I was kind of assuming it was a Stargate because I didn't see him researching but I didn't know for sure okay. and I I was like nervous to lose the overlord so I and I was like I'm about to have speed so I'll just put him okay. over here well the, the fact that you already pay attention to warp gate's really good like I, I didn't if you're doing that already keep doing that very 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 good very intelligent uh so nice shit but the one thing about a stargate that's really nice too is there's different reactions for different units built out of the stargate so they can only have three options at first because they have to have a fleet beacon to make all five <laughs> the three options are an Oracle, a Phoenix, and a Void Ray. And I would say it's probably like 48% chance of, or like 49% chance of either a Void Ray or an Oracle. And it's like a 2% chance of a, a fucking Phoenix. Like no one really goes Phoenix first, even though it does happen sometimes. The proper way to deal with a Void Ray, make more Queens. Make like two more Queens. Do not make a single Spore. The proper way to deal with an Oracle immediately make one spore per mineral line and the proper way to deal with the phoenix don't make anything until probably like 45 seconds from now and then make multiple spores per base or like maybe even like a minute from then so if you don't know what unit is because the reason why it works like that is if you make one spore per base for an oracle it really reduces the amount of drones that are going to get harassed but you might even lose zero if you pull the drone line away like let's say an oracle comes in from the south and you pull the south side of the mineral line to the north side of the mineral line the Oracle walks into the Spore Caller for a second and the Queen and then goes, oh shit, run away. That could totally happen. Because an Oracle will die to a Spore and a Queen within about five seconds. So it doesn't have a lot of time to live if that's if that's ready. Versus a Void Ray. 
Avoider, he doesn't need to kill drones to be effective. It can literally even kill your hatcheries and kill buildings and be annoying as shit or kill queens. So if you have multiple queens, it makes it really hard for Avoiders to accomplish that. And if you, if you have multiple queens, it also gives you more creep spread, which shows you where they're coming from. So queens are a great answer to Void Ray Opener. And then if it's Phoenix, again, the only time Phoenix are annoying is when there's like five or more. Because then your a couple queens that you have can't really deal with it oh, anymore. Yeah. So then if you just have a lot of fucking drones, because you don't make spores as early. Because the earlier you make spores, the harder it is to afford it while also spinning your larva. So if you delay your spores because it's Phoenix, you can wait until you have like 60 fucking drones. And they'd be like multiple spores per base, like maybe three per base, like around the mineral line and on the other side of the hatchery, just so that it covers everything. And then you're good to go. And then every time Phoenix lines your base, they just get fucking pounded by spores. Uh, so different reactions are definitely appropriate for like different things out of the Stargate. Okay, now, so I would definitely recommend sacking that Overlord faster, way, way faster. <coughs> and then uh, your Link Scouts, okay. Sorry, there's a lot of information about Protoss uh, that is important to talk about with, when it comes to uh, reactive. So Lings right now, a couple of Lings right now are totally fine to deal with early Adepts before you have Link Speed, which is kind of what you made too, um, which is a little scary because you might lose some drones right now to this, especially if, since you're also with the gas that we talked about earlier. Your queens are also delayed, which is going to make it even harder to not lose drones. So I fully imagine if this guy actually commits to this, he's probably going to kill at least like three drones right now. Uh, so that's step one here. We'll talk about this for a second. Nice pull there, but now you're losing on a mining time, which also kind of sucks. You lost two drones. Wasn't the worst amount of drones to die, but losing mining time like that's a little bit rough. And now you're making the blind spores right now because you're assuming Stargate. So this is risky simply because if this Protoss player actually was going, let's just say he was the other guy that was like, you know what I'm going to do? Probably I'm going to go for a fucking Robo. And a fucking Disruptor shows up and blows up your mineral line and you're like, wait, what? Like this is just going to put you further behind. Like it's just not going to be good for you. Uh, so now talking about your Lings, if a Protoss player takes a third base before four minutes, that means that the Protoss player is 100% being greedy. They are probably not maximizing their gateway uptime with unit production. They're probably skipping a couple units here and there. And uh, they're saving money for that third super in a super greedy way. There also is a good chance they're probably chrono boosting the shit out of their nexus repeatedly for more probe uh, production for minerals. And they also probably don't have their gas so they're natural. Uh, and they also probably only have one gateway and one stargate at that point in time. Or like sub four minutes. If a Protoss player takes a third base between four minutes and 4.30, that means that this Protoss player is going to probably have two gateways. He's making units at a decent pace. And he has a stargate, most likely still, because it's really hard to take a third base if you don't have a stargate that fast. So it means he'll just have a little bit of a later third, but it'll be more protected. Now, if a, if a, if a Protoss player takes a third base between like 4.30 and 5 minutes... <clears throat> there is a very high chance that this guy is playing more standard and it does not mean anything about tech. It does not mean it has to be a Stargate at all. It could be any of the tech. It could be a Robo, it could be a Council, or it could be a Stargate. Uh, because it, at that point, there's enough time that has gone by for it to uh, support, like that third base to still also be active, but support like four production buildings. So it could be like four gateways and a Robo for a Prism or some shit like that. Uh, like very, very, very possible. Uh, and then finally the big one the really big one if a Protoss player takes a third base after 5 minutes every single 10 seconds that goes by you can literally like add 2 gateways to whatever they're, they're, you think that how many gateways they have is so 5 minutes very standard to have 4 gateways 510 very standard to have 6 gateways 520 very standard to have 8 gateways 530, 540, 550 and 6 minutes very standard to just be using those gateways to all in the shit out of the other guy. Or have a tech all in, which is like two Stargates and a Fleet Beacon and they're going for like a fucking carrier timing or some weird shit like that. But if you have not seen a Protoss player take a third base by after five minutes, you should be making army right now. And if you don't know what kind of an all in it would be, you should be scouting their base with like an Overseer to find out if it's air based or if it's ground based. And most of the time it'll probably be ground based. But... So now that we talked about that, let's talk about your link usage here. 
So right now your legs are scouting your thirds. And this is brutal for you. Because if this Protoss player was taking a really greedy third, like if he's the guy that takes a sub four minute third, you could have easily killed it with the tool you gave yourself, which is Zergling Speed. So and all, you don't even need to make mass links for that. Like 14 links, more than enough. And it protects you from early adepts, like uh, that were at your base a second ago, it would die to queens and shit. But it protects you from early adepts and it also protects you from allowing Protoss to just have a third base for free, essentially. And then, but four, again, before three, uh, before four minutes, up to four minutes is super greedy. Between four minutes and 4.30, that would be a Protoss player that, again, does a build that is more, uh, <laughs> still greedy, but protected with, uh, like two gateways. And we're at 4.30 now, and right now you have no information. Uh, you have information on the doorway with your overlord, which is nice, but you have no information on the third base or the other third base. And then at five minutes, this would be the moment, again, where Protoss would now be playing standard. 4.30 to five minutes, Protoss' standard is fuck here. And they're t if they take the third now, it means they probably have four production buildings. And they're just playing safe. And right now, your overlord went in and suicided over the middle line, essentially. But you, had, you still don't know where his third is. And your overlord gets into the main base on the side of it. And now you have a second overlord coming in over here. And you see... Something, some random structure over there, and you see two more buildings over there that he just built, and you fly away. And we're at 520 now. So you just saw this. You just now saw this at 5, like 16, 515. And if we look at your production right now, you're starting Zerglings. You have Banelings. You, and Evo Chamber is on the way as well. And you have 50 drones, okay? So I would say right now, I'm, I would be very worried for you about how you could die to a lot of different time, type of timing attacks. Because a lot of different timings, if they were going to be a two base all in, they would have been like, it, it, like you would be past that point of no return where it would probably kill you very soon after. Because for the la from the, like the 330 mark until the five minute mark, there was zero scouting at his base up until you moved your overlord. And because you got Overlord speed, believe it or not, that slows you down on your reactions. That gives you more vision to see what he's doing in his base, but it slows down the reactions you can have because it means you have to mine gas for longer, which delays your mineral production for longer, uh, which hinders your opener. Like, it's the exact same thing as well. It, it, it's like it times two of the effect of what we talked about earlier, where we talked about... If you take a gas and you take a third base, you're, you're like fucking your queen up. You can't afford that. You can't afford your larva as well. Like it's going to be delayed. It's the same thing. If you take your more gas into overlord speed, you're never going to be able to spend all your larva as you get it because this is another added expense. And you already you already can't spend all of your larva as you get it playing pure mineral with just circling speed. So like it, it's just going to further delay how much larva you have and how fast you have it. Which is going to just massively slow you down. Uh, hardcore. One other thing that's really, 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 really important too against Protoss. It could be Baneling Nest. It could be a Roach Warren. I prefer Roach Warren. But you have to build whatever tech you're going to build. And the reason why I prefer Roach Warren is because it doesn't cost gas. Uh, and they're really durable. But you have to build your billing as to whatever it's going to be. Between like 340 and 350. Because if you don't. You're never going to have units in time for a five-minute all-in. And right now, if you're getting hit by a five-minute all-in, which you just now like figured out if it was even going to happen or not, it would already be attacking you and killing you right now. So how do you fix what I was just talking about? The links that you put at your thirds, put them at his thirds from now on, I would say. And if you see a, if, if you want to try and punish greedy protosses like this, which I, I love doing personally... Make like 14 links and have them run to his third base around the point when your speed is finishing, which will be around 3.30. So your link speed is going to be finishing around the time when a Protoss would be taking a really greedy expansion if they were going to play really greedy like that. So you could take like... Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, you could take like 14 links at 3.30 and just punish people who play like this. And then, wonderful. It's like, cool, now your, your third's fucked. <clears throat> and if like let's say like maybe like one adept is out there trying to defend it as well or something or like one adept in one century and you just get free kills on units too it just make it pays the links they pay for themselves so fast uh and it's, it's it gives you tons of scouting too 
Another thing that's really great with your lings is periodically, if you're still, if you, you know, don't see a third base, periodically check the fucking doorway. Because not only can you check the doorway for upgrades on the core, and which tells you they're going for a Stargate build, like if they're going for weapon upgrades and going fast carriers or something, but it also shows you what's in the doorway. Do they have one unit in the doorway the entire time? Or are there multiple units around the area that are like amassing there? Which again, further tells you what the composition he's probably going to go for, like more likely. Because uh, a lot of Protosses are going to leave their units somewhat near the doorway, generally speaking against Zerg, because a lot of times Protoss is blind as fuck in the early game. And they don't want to get, like, out of nowhere, have, like, a bunch of Banes and Lings and Ravagers, like, bust their door down. And they're, like, way the fuck over here hiding units. And they're, oh, God, my natural's dead. Like, so Protoss will be in the area because they always have the fear of an all-in. Because you definitely can. Uh, so, there's a lot of reads you can make with Zerglings. And you don't need a uh, uh, speed, Overlord speed to do that. You just you just need your the initial scout of tech with your first Overlord. And you can... Really tell what a Protoss is going to do the rest of the game. Uh, it's it's a, a lot more um, feasible. So I know I talked a lot. And I don't want to overdo it. In, in the sense of like making this confusing. But everything I just talked about. Is anything confusing? Anything not make sense? No, that's all. that all checks out to me. Okay. Uh, and then from this point on. If this was me, okay. I would immediately be needing to get vision of if there is or if there is not a third. Because if I did not see a third, and I have checked the entire map by now, I would be making units. I'd be thinking to myself, okay, he opened up Stargate. Let's just say I, let's say I knew this, okay? This would be my reaction. I'd be like, okay, he made a Stargate first. And this guy attacked me with one Adept. Since then, he hasn't attacked me with shit. Like, he, uh, he poked me with an Oracle as well for a moment. So I know, like he, I, that confirms he didn't cancel the Stargate or anything like that. It's really there. I know it's there. He went Stargate, and now he hasn't. Like, let's just say again, he doesn't have a third, and it's beyond five minutes. I'd be like, is this guy about to do a charge lot all in, or is he about to do some like weird fleet beacon attack? I need a fucking overseer right now to scout his base, which is cheaper than Overlord speed for two reasons. Number one, it's overall less resources. It costs half the amount of overlord speed because it's 50 50 versus 100 100 and the second one the even bigger reason that people don't think about but it is so much more important it's later in the game so it's cheaper because you're getting the up you're getting the overseer off of like 60 drones rather than getting overlord speed off of like 30 drones it is so much cheaper when you have more money to work with uh it doesn't really fuck your build up so I would absolutely be like, if I didn't see a third again, I would be trying to figure out what the hell's going on if my Ling Scouts didn't go like, oh yeah, he's warping in like six fucking Zealots and I'm about to get charged lot all in. Or six Adepts. Or if I saw nothing in the doorway and I poked it with Zerglings and I made Protoss freak out and he showed me two carriers because he's like, fuck, I'm going to break. And I, because that, 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 I hope that makes sense, but like you can force reactions out of Protoss when you pack, attack them. It doesn't even need to be a lot of units. It could be enough units to, like I said, to like deny their third. And if he doesn't have a third, you can just poke their door with it at around like five minutes and be like, come defend this with whatever you're all me with. And if, again, if the Protoss is going for like two carriers and a fleet beacon and a plus one weapons, he's not going to have like 10 stalkers. He can't afford that. He's going to have like a stalker and maybe a battery. And if he just overcharges a battery with one stalker in the doorway and just waits on it, the high, that's a much higher chance that it's a Stargate. And you're like, ah, okay. Like, maybe still get an Overseer in the base, but, like, that's definitely, like, weird, right? Or if he just, like, crushes yeah. it with, like, a lot of ground units, then you know, okay, not Stargate. Like, not crazy Stargate investment. Uh, but, yeah. Um, so, Ling's definitely good for that. Um, but now, that's assuming he doesn't have a third. So, getting something to scout into his base, really, really, really important. But if he does have a third, you'd want to know, when did it start? Because the worst thing in the world that players don't realize until they know timers, when you scout a base and it's already done, it doesn't feel good because you have no idea when he took it. It means nothing about build. Like, you can't tell build order now if it's already finished. But you can tell build order if it's under construction when you scout it. So if you were to have scouted a third base and let's say you caught it when it's only like 20% into production... You could be like, okay, I know he took this building X amount of time ago. And you can actually tell how much time ago that was if you know the timer of a building. Like, if you, I don't know if you know this, but if you know how long a Nexus takes to build, 
if you, if you that, that that's great if you don't know that it takes 71 seconds and it's the same for a hatchery and it's the same for a command center it's all 71 seconds for main bases and uh that is huge information because that tells you how early they took it and based on how early they took it that tells you what how much production they have and how greedy they're being so if you saw this was like okay he took this at four minutes that's definitely greedy whereas if you saw he took this at like let's say he took it right now at 522 there could be fucking seven gateways behind this or eight gateways behind this like there could be an all-in coming with this as well this might not be a genuine third base this might be like plan b if the all-in fails so that's really 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 important to know when it started uh but if you saw it was there and you saw like if we're talking if it was earlier in the game if, if i was playing this out i would feel the need to make some units to be uh safe versus harassment maybe like 10 roaches or something and then i would make drones again if i thought this guy was actually doing a third base but if i thought this guy was actually all me i would make seriously probably 30 roaches right now like i would just make a lot of roaches or if i thought it was a stargate based all in i would start making queens some roaches and an immediate spire because i would need to make corruptors to deal with like carriers or tempest or whatever he's going for yeah so so far you have any questions no no everything you said makes sense so far okay but i'm just making sure because i am talking a lot and there is a lot of st stages and steps to this and there will be a vod so you can always go back and listen to it a million times over to, to like really uh hear it multiple times if you want to so that's nice but i just want to make sure the yeah you're not i'm not like leaving you in the dust here with like random shit i'm saying okay, you're good. Fuck, my nose is like running right now it's not cool okay so you see a third base and it is um it is almost done so again i'll, I'll throw an example out here as to like what this means so looking at this really fast I do not expect you to be able to do this or anyone out there in Diamond League or even Masters League to be able to do this like with your first try. This is something that takes practice and experience to do quickly because you also don't have this much time like we're talking right here where you can just pause the game and be like, let's take 30 seconds to talk about this. You have like one second to analyze this. But this Nexus is almost done. It's like what I would guess probably like 90% completed. So that be if, if we're talking about 90% of 71 seconds, that's probably around 64 seconds into the build time. Like, ish. And, uh... If I were to mount... That, which means, if we go back 64 seconds into the build time, that means that this third base was taken by probably, like, 4 minutes and uh, 47 seconds. Which falls into the threshold of safe third base. Because this means that this Protoss probably took this third base off of 4 production buildings roughly so if we look at it it's 60 seconds of production so it was close right it doesn't have to be exactly accurate but still 60 seconds ago means that he built it at 451 and if we go all the way back to 451 when he built it like right here so he just now started the fourth base he's got a, a void ray he's got double gateway and he is making stalkers so he only has two production buildings, but he's utilizing them to make expensive units. He's not making like sentries and adepts, which are much cheaper than a stalker is. A stalker is overall the most expensive unit you can make on a gateway early on for like total resources. Uh, but and he's making multiple of them. But he, I mean, he's making stalkers. He's also making multiple units out of the Stargate. So he's not making like one unit here and then going for the third or some shit. He's literally pumping void rays now behind or oracles. So it makes sense. This makes sense because he's fully utilizing the buildings that he has, more or less. It's just, essentially, the point that this means is, this is not, an, it, even if it had four gateways, it would be less pump, more building. But because he has a Stargate and two gateway, it's more pump with less building because he's just constantly building units out of them. But the whole point of why this matters and what this means is it's not enough to kill you, but it is enough to protect his third base. Like, if you show up, he doesn't lose it because it's late enough to protect it. However, if you showed up a minute ago and he took this a minute ago, he'd have like one Oracle and one Adept trying to protect that shit, which is not enough to stop like 16 Lings or some shit like that. Like that would die, especially if you caught it right as it started. Sorry, I just snapped my fingers. The dog is like, what? Uh, <laughs> but yeah. 
Yeah. Hi. He's <laughs> sorry. Okay. Uh Alright. And then that would be huge too. Like st stuff like this too, where you see uh a uh stasis ward, that's great info. Simply because that's energy. Like you can already kind of feel it because Protoss is not attacking your drones, but that's energy he's investing defensively that he's not investing into killing drones. So that's more information as to how this game is being played. Because uh this just means that you're not like you're further ahead than you should be. So the pacing of the game is more in your favor because I'm not going to lie, if Protoss and Zerg are both defensive greed, Zerg should have an edge there. The only time Zerg would not have an edge in defensive greed is if Zerg is not actually greedy and he's playing way too safe. And he's like, I'm just making tons of fucking defense that I don't need. Or I'm like, you know, making my build inefficient in certain ways and stuff like that. Uh. Ah. Okay. Uh, you have a fourth base. Fourth base and a fifth, or sorry, a fifth base. I, I was going to say, this fourth base is kind of late, but that's not actually your fourth base. That's your fourth base. I like that fourth base. That's a good fourth base. That's a good fifth <laughs> base. Uh, the only thing I would say I would want you to do here to make sure you maximize that is do not take all of your gas right now. Uh, if you take all your gas right now, the only thing that really does for you is that allows you to really prioritize tech units. And tech units means layer plus. Definitely not hatchery-based units. You do not need a lot of gas to build hatchery units, whether no, no matter what it is. There's, there's only one unit you actually do need a decent amount of gas to build, and that is Ravagers. But you never want to have like a pure army of Ravagers because that's so bad. Um, you want like them as support units, so you'd want to have like maybe six in total or like eight. Never, definitely not like 30 of them. Um, so it, again, it's still kind of light on gas if you follow that kind of a rule. But essentially, I would say you could get away with your build right now with like three or four gases, okay? And right now you have one active. You're taking number two, number three, and number four. So your gas count is overall fine. But I would say if you want to really maximize this, make a few units defensively, like a few uh, banelings or a few roaches. I would prefer roaches, but something defensively. And then quickly saturate your base over here if you confirm he's macroing a third base. The worst thing in the world you can do against Burdos is have equal economy the entire time. Which is right now you're actually behind him. So this is a tip, okay? Don't ever forget this. If you ever watch any replays of yourself in the future, this is so important to know this. A Protoss player should always be ahead of you in workers, like they're not going to be ahead of you right at the start of the game because you can make two workers at once, whereas they can't, uh, like with the larva and shit. But around like, like they're going to be really close and then around like almost 20, they're going to pass you with Chrono Boost. And you're going to also be building buildings so you're losing drones. Like when you build a hatchery, a pool, and a, and a uh, gas and shit, you will go behind them. But realistically, you should not ever be ahead of Protoss until the mid 30s of worker count. Like once you get to like 38, and they're at like 35. You'll be, you should be ahead. You should pull ahead there if you're macroing properly. And you should never lose that lead. If you do, okay. if you do lose that lead, it means that Perdos probably killed drones, which is bad for you because you're losing drones. Or it means that you read the build wrong because you're playing way too safe when you could actually have been droning like way more. And you're slowing yourself down way more than you need to. Uh, like realistically, how it should go is Protoss and you should be almost tied or you should be behind in workers until, again, the mid-30s. And then at the mid-30s, you should pull a, pull away. And then you should pull away so hard that you have like 70 drones when he has like 55 to 60 probes. That's ideally how, what you would want it to look like. Uh, the only way Protoss will ever keep up with you is if they are being exceptionally greedy. And it would be a situation where it's like, let's say Protoss takes his third base at like sub four minutes and you don't deny that. Then Protoss is, that's like he got away with being extremely greedy. And now he'll have a equal, like a, a probe count to your drone count that's somewhat similar. Uh, but that's like the only reason why that should happen. Otherwise, you should always be ahead. And if you if you actually can accomplish that and make that a reality, you should always know that if you're not losing drones 
And every Zerg who's like Masters Plus should feel like this. If you play against Protoss and you lose no drones, you should be ahead. You should never think to yourself, oh, I'm versing a Protoss player and I'm just behind because I didn't kill probes. That that's not real. That's not that's not reality. That's like th that Zerg player just doesn't fully understand the opener of the game yet. Because Protoss cannot scale as good as Zerg can at all. Like they can scale pretty fine with Chrono Boost. It's not bad. But Zerg should always scale faster than Protoss should. So Zerg should have a drone lead going into the mid game, and if they lose none of them, they should have a, an edge going into the mid game because they're once they shift gears and start pumping out units now, it's gonna be a lot stronger than it should be because they're like they're faster. And it goes in the, in, the, in the sense of like everything we just talked about, like all that macro stuff we just talked about. Okay, so now we're going into the mid game, and you, you, your, your choices you've given yourself now for this point in the game are a decent amount of larva, which I like, and. You have a Rotorin that has not started an upgrade. You have an Evo Chamber that has not yet started an upgrade. And you have a Bailing Nest that has not yet started an upgrade. So I would say you've given yourself limited options. Because you can make everything that you can make on Hatchery Tech. And it's all going to be the lesser version of what it would have been for Lair. Because you have no mobility upgrades. And Link Speed's like a given because you can get that on Hatchery Tech. But like the Lair Tech upgrades, none of them have started and no upgrade has started. And I would say the upgrade is actually the least impactful thing in this whole situation that you've given yourself so far but having no roach speed or no uh bane speed and you those are the only options you have that's a little bit scary for you because once again like i said before we're like at five minutes if you don't scout before that you could die to an all-in if this guy attacked you with like a seven minute all-in on three bases which is very real you would just die uh versus a protoss player that can do timings like that or that is doing timings like that so you really, 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 really need to think about when you're taking your layer and what for. And I would say 100% of the time, it should be for Roach speed. I think Roaches are way more solid against Protoss than Banes are. Banes are very high level. If you're very, very, very active with like, like for instance, Banelings with Overlord speed and you Baneling drop Mineral Lines constantly. Like that would be, that's like some Serral shit right there. But that would be fine if you're like able to handle that. Uh, I'm not saying you can't, but that's something that, that that only makes sense if you do shit like that. Like these are for killing workers, not for killing army, really. Roaches are really good at just overall well-rounded versatility. They're good at fighting army, and they're also if you win the fight against army, they're now really good at killing nexus and probes too. So roaches are just like a really good option in my opinion, and that would mean <coughs> the second you take a layer, when you get it. Roach speed starts right away. It like immediately just like goes right off the bat. Because Roach speed is going to make or break your defense against Protoss so hard. <laughs> like you can't fight Zealots without it. With it. If Zealots have charge, you can't properly kite. If Stalkers have blink, you can't properly swarm and like overwhelm them. If this guy goes for uh, like Disruptors, you can't properly split. If this guy goes for Adepts, you can't properly chase Shades. Like, you can't probably do any micro without Roach Speed, with, with Roach Warrens. Uh, so, you, that's so important to get that upgrade. Okay, and then... Uh, you're making a l lot of static D right now. And I would... or Okay, no, you're not. You're making one. I would say... Oh, you, you made a lot here. Okay, this, yeah, this is over, this is excessive. This is not good. Because once again, you're massively opening yourself up to getting attacked. If the Protoss scouts this and goes, you know what? If he just straight up kills it before your army gets there, then it's just dead anyways. But let's say he was like, oh, nice static D at this base. Let's say he has an observer. And he just goes, you know what? I'm going to attack from the south end here. And I'm going to kill this and just go straight into your natural. Like all this is an investment that does nothing. So, and that's an expensive investment too. This is a lot. That's six spines with this one included. And some spores. Like, spores, I think, are totally fine because he has a Stargate. But the spines, this is like you're preparing for, like, at 12-minute in-game when you're only at the sub-8-minute mark. You haven't even maxed out yet. So, like, the only, there's only one exception to making spines as part of your static D. 
and that or sorry there's there's two one of them is if you don't have the necessary means of tech yet like if you're like fuck i delayed my roach warren and i need something that can like actually do a lot of like damage from range and like burst shit that's better than just zerglings and queens and I, the only option i have for the quickest fix is spine crawlers if that was the case making spines in that situation is like okay because it logically if you don't make them you're gonna die uh, and you know you're gonna get it all in right now, so you need them now because you can't wait for roaches. That's one okay. That's one situation where it's okay. The only other situation where it's okay to make spines early game is if the Protoss is like not taking a third base, and he's going for like let's say like double Warp Prism Dark Templar drops, where it's like he's harassing you in multiple spots with tech units that are just gonna be extremely obnoxious to deal with, and you think that spine making spine crawlers is less damaging to your economy. And having to multitask out DTs and losing a bunch of fucking drones. One sec, I gotta that put the dog down. Oh. Yeah. Uh, if that was the case, then that would be okay. Because like you're just you're you're trying to like take less damage, and there's that that's like something that can do a lot of damage if you're not ready for it. But if it wasn't one of those things, I would say making static D is only acceptable when you're no longer going to have the means to defend your base, which means you're attacking and you're active on the map now. So now the pro the, the, the chance of a like a multi-prong where they attack your main with a prism and maybe do a run by of zealots on your other base at the on the outside, like these things are now way more problematic because your main army is like way the fuck over here attacking like a fourth base. That's okay to make static D then as well. because But also at that point, you're going to have like 85, 90 drones. So it's not hard to afford it either. Uh, so yeah, otherwise like this right here, massively slowing you down. Our forces are under attack. Okay, you see double forge. So like I would say honestly, right at this point too, just gonna sit through those other two. At this point, I'm not gonna lie, scouting is irrelevant. As weird as that sounds, I I it is relevant if you're a pro gamer. Okay, if you're like re like really fucking good at StarCraft too. Scouting is relevant then because players know how to play with minimal and play efficient as fuck and then rotate tech a lot. And then they can do like tech swaps off minimal defense. But if you're playing ladder, and this applies to GM as well, like GM players fall in this category as well. If you're playing ladder, at this point, scouting means nothing. And the reason why is because you can force reactions with good macro. And if your opponent doesn't react... And they, they're like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to fucking tech switch carriers right now. And you're like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to max out on Lings and Roaches and attack your third base. Even if he's starting to go carriers, you kill the third, you kill everything that was there, and the game's over. He can't afford carriers anymore. He's fucking broke. And now a broke tech switcher, you could just also tech switch yourself, even if it's delayed, and you'll still be fine. And then you'll, you'll get tech eventually and kill it, and you're fine, because he's broke. <coughs> so... Generally speaking, what people are going to do right now is they're going to use the tech they've given themselves and maximize that. Like, this guy is most likely going to make Disruptors or Colossi. He's most likely going to make some sort of Zealot, Stalker, or Adept. And he's going to, like, maybe also support that with something out of the, like, a basic Stargate, like some Voids. So I, I would not be surprised if we see an army of Stalker, Colossus, Void Ray. Like, that would be very possible. And if you just have... Lings and Roaches, and you don't let this guy take a lot of bases initially, and then you take another tech later, like uh, right here, Hydras is fine. You could go like Hydra Viper. You could go Hydra Lurker. You could do a lot of things with Hydra, but as long as you have something that can handle the little bits of air that he's going to have so they can't just farm your ass all day. I know. I'll feed you soon. <laughs> Sorry, the dog is like giving me the biggest eyes right now. Like, Give me food. Uh, but as long as you have something that can... Uh, deal with the the air support that he has you're good which is you've given yourself hydras that totally works uh and you, again you don't need to have maxed out hydras either just like you could have like 20 hydras or like 15 hydras in your army and you'd probably be fine but compositions only make sense though if you max out fast and you actually poke your opponent this is something that diamond players struggle with really, 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 really hard. Uh, diamond players tend to... Uh, they tend to not 
scout. They, they tend to do exactly what you're doing right now, which is they chill. They do a lot of chilling. They're like, okay, you're doing your thing. <laughs> I'm doing my thing. He's... Okay, he, the song is being so cute. He's so hungry. They're, they're, they do a lot of like just chilling out where they want to just like play their game and not really play like the game of overall like poking each other. So right now, this is going to become a problem for you because the reason why is you're making Roachling. Roachling is great if you're using it actively. But if you sit on Roachling and you wait and you wait and you wait, it it like it's like milk in like the hot sun. It expires really fucking fast. And suddenly you're setting spoiled fucking lings and roaches at your opponent and they just get nothing done. And you're like, wow, that army sucks. That army was so bad and it like it felt like shit. And then now this guy's got tech and a high enough a supply amount of it to where my roaches and lings don't even dent it anymore. And now I'm super far behind because I made an army that did nothing. And now I got to start from scratch again. And it's like a waste. But in reality, what these guys should be doing is not allowing a fourth base to exist. And maybe if you could do it fast as well, maybe not even letting a third base exist. So like right now, if this Protoss has four or five bases, he's got four bases fully saturated. And uh, no fifth started yet, but this fourth base right now should have had some more retention than, than this. Because if you're going to passively sit here on your armies and he's going to passively sit on his army, he absolutely has the advantage right now because Colossi... Stalker Disruptor scales better than just Roachling. Colossi, oh. yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, you understand. So if you're going to sit back defensively, I would say one of the best things you could do would be get a very fast Hive and get very fast Lurker upgrades and then just go Lurkers uh, and try to like play the game in that, in that way. Some type of tech advantage. Get something that can actually counter that and also that. And Lurker Hydra is one way to do that. Because you just gotta micro the Lurkers against the Shrupters so that they don't die. And then you can beat the Shrupters and then Colossi hard... Or, sorry. Lurkers hard counter Colossi and Stalker and pretty much everything in the way. I screw up this micro so bad. This is, you can't even call this micro. <laughs> well, what I, what I think is gonna happen is you're just gonna get blown up by the Shrupter shots probably. Something like that. Yeah. Okay, so we also just showed you... Like... Attacking here. What do you think? So this Protoss has a goal. What do you think the Protoss's goal is right now? Seeing this swap fight right out, here. Swap everything out to carriers. Exactly. Do you understand? You also understood the, the warp gate thing. You're, you're, you know what's going on. But like right now, if this guy's goal right now is like, all right, I'm going to make a sky toss transition. I have enough units that I made early game to not die. I've also been passive. So this guy's also been super passive. So he has no intentions of killing you unless it's with a death ball. Because he, he doesn't want to harass you to death. He doesn't want to do timing attacks. He wants to kill you with like his fucking huge macro death ball muscle that you can't stop. Which means absolutely this guy's going for supreme in-game tech right now. He's going to transition into it and like go for that. So as Zerg, what would you... What, what, is, what do you usually do here? Like I'll be able to see it in a second. But like if this was... If you could replay this... It doesn't have to be what you did in this game. If you could replay this right now, what would you do right now? What do you think would be the best? Yeah. Right here. I I would tr I would transition to uh Hyper Corruptor Roach and then try to uh, assume that he's going to max out on carrier and that's pretty much what I do, I think. So, going Roach and then max like switching into Corruptor yourself and stuff like that. That's not a bad choice. Uh, because what I pretty much what I would do as well, not going to lie. If this was me, what I would do as well is I would think to myself, what is good uh, tech for a Zerg that I can make that can deal with Sky Toss really well? And I really do think uh, Corruptors are hands down the best thing you can make to deal with Sky Toss. I don't think Hydra's even come close to how good uh, Corruptors are. So I think Corruptor would be a good choice. And I think the way you use your army here, if you saw this, if I were you, I would probably back the fuck out like right now and maybe only leave a few units to try and kill as many probes as possible. But like realistically, you're not going to kill much because you have a bunch of uh, crap here defending. Protoss has a lot of stuff here defending it already. So you're probably not going to get a lot of damage done if you stay. 
So back up. Split it, I didn't split it at all. Like I should have had half of it go up one side of the ramp and half of it go up the other side of the ramp. I don't know what I was doing. Yeah, like that. you could have had a more surface area engagement for sure. I agree with you. But like seeing this though, seeing that it's Robo with Stargate, like you already knew it had Stargate Robo in the first place. So this is always a possibility. But now that, uh, now that uh, you actually see it's genuinely like in-game Stargate. It's not just like some voids. It's actually going carriers now. This definitely is a turtle toss who wants to max out. So if I were you... And, and I guess, like, I was... Uh, I'm, like, comfortable against air toss now. So my thought process in this game was, like, uh, I'm just going to cover the whole map with creep and get more bases, and then there's just no way this person can A, move me. I'll, I'll, I'll stop him. So it was a little too passive, and then yeah, I, my attack was, like... I, I was like very like disrespectful. I was like, I'm gonna just move in on this base and put lurkers down and it'll be enough. Like it didn't work. Yeah. Uh no, I agree. Like um I would say the best thing in the world you could do right now is think to yourself, okay, tech switch is now a thing I need to do here. I don't have the proper tech to deal with what I'm about to deal with, and it's gonna only get more severe the more the game goes on. So I need to switch tech to now deal with what is happening. And while I do that, I need to abuse the one thing I can abuse, which is almost always the answer here. It's very rare this is not the answer, but the answer right now would be <laughs> abusing mobility. So one thing you could do, if you think to yourself, okay, this position I'm in is really good. Uh, like I have a lot more bases than he does. I can just make sure he doesn't get a fifth base and I can re-poke back and forth this base from here and then have poke over here. My creep spreads nice. It's gonna allow me to get rotations really fast. Just keep poking, 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 poking. Never engage his army, make him play defensive, kill probes when I can, maybe kill a Nexus if I really get him out of position one time, and then be annoying as fuck while I go into Corruptor or whatever. That would be like if you're like right like right now, I would say that wouldn't be the worst thing you could do because he has one carrier. But if it's like dire and you need you need to play more time of the mobility game, because if he attacks you at all, you're gonna die. If it's like let's say you already had like eight carriers and you're like, fuck. If he pushes, I just lose. <clears throat> you need to think, how can I maximize mobility? And Zerg has two ways they can do that. One way is with something you already have. Overlord speed. Make some fucking drop lords and be like really fucking annoying. Drop lord, like three drop lords are back here. Do something annoying as fuck over here. Move in from the complete other side and attack this base over here. <coughs> and make Protoss just really spread himself out and be weird, like awkwardly defending shit. Make him stay home longer so that you can just transition for longer about a, a longer period of time another way you can do that is with nidus worm you can poke one side maybe even like nidus the main while you poke the back and then you can even nidus behind your army so let's say you back off with your main army and he you know like goes back over to his main you load up into the main get your units out of there and then as this one finishes over here re-unload over here and hit the space full on while you now make another nidus over here again to rotate back into his main again later like do annoying shit with nidus do something that like makes him stay defensive. You just can't push in one spot and be like, cross my fingers. Because the death ball is going to kill you in seconds. It's not going to take long to kill you. So the whole point is, avoid the fight. Kill weak shit that can't defend itself like probes and nexus and cannons. Like cannons are super easy to kill if nothing's supporting them. Uh, as ver versus like if there's a full army supporting cannons and batteries, you can't fight that. Um, Sense. Yeah. So it's just, you want to extend the game you don't want to you want to draw the fight out not make it happen now uh, yeah i don't know why i played the way i did the whole game and then decided to be like this aggro for no reason i feel like this is what people do when they get um impatient they're just like uh i don't really know what the fuck's going on i'm just gonna fucking attack like <laughs> like i just I'm, I'm just gonna see what happens here let's fucking send it we're gonna full send and maybe we'll maybe it works out and then it usually doesn't because it's usually like decisions like that where you just fucking send it and you're just like, we'll see. It usually leads into you throwing an army into their death and then you're like, well, shouldn't have sent it. Okay. Because usually when you have a good fight, you know it's going to be a good fight before it happens. And that comes from yeah, scouting. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah. Just avoiding this fight altogether. Lifting like, like up rowing, backing the fuck out and rotating to a different base would have definitely been the best thing. Um, way about handling this situation i would say yeah disruptor's just blowing up all your fucking lurkers half the army gets stasis and then the rest of his army just like runs you down and it's also lurkers burrowed versus uh i guess it is only one he, carrier but 
he does just badly enough though. Like he, he oh, yeah. just like he lets those lurkers stay alive and really screw his army yeah. up. No, I can I can see I'm seeing that. Like he did not need to run like so let, let me tell you something really fast. This is something people like to do all the time. These lurkers, it doesn't matter how fucking long they sit there. He could have literally sat here until his rupter cooldown came back up again and threw more shots at you. But people, t this is his, him now being impatient. There is no reason why this guy has to attack into these lurkers right now if you're out of range of the Nexus. Yeah. Like he doesn't, he, there's no, no, no fire under his ass that's making him have to go, 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 go. Other than his own uh feeling of security he's like oh i don't feel safe right now go fucking kill this <laughs> and half my yeah. ground army dies as a result of that and i felt like good about the trade because i had a bank and, and i remaxed right away i was like all right that was bad but like it could have been way worse kind oh of. it that was actually not bad for you i'm not gonna lie that, that should not have gone that way but yeah that was actually not a bad trade at all i shouldn't rely on that kind of trade well, logically, it made no sense to take that fight. But the only reason why it worked out is because this guy panicked and he just fucking sent it into your army and then just was like, get away. All gateway units die in the process and all my disruptors and my colossi. But the fact that you backed out eventually, I'm glad you did. Because that actually is now no longer bad. You just right now would really need a spire. If you don't make it, like if you don't make a spire, you need to make infestors. You cannot beat, uh, or Hydra. Hydra would also work as long as you keep as long as you keep the carrier count low. Vipers can work, but if the carrier count is really high, Vipers don't work anymore. You need Infestors because you can't deal with uh, the sheer DPS that they put out if you don't have a microbial shroud. If you're working with ground units, makes sense. Yeah. Uh. And then I would just say the whole concept of Hydra or Viper Infester is just kind of bad overall. Only because it's not just Skytoss. It's Skytoss plus Robo. Which is like double down on the negative side for Hydras. Uh, <laughs> like right there. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> that wasn't even so Carriers. Bad. That was a fucking Disruptor that wiped out half your Hydras right there. <laughs> yeah, it was so bad. Okay, you made Double Spire. That's fine. Now, I would say this is a little tip again. Just a quick tip. Only ever make double spire if you're more rich than you can spend. You're definitely not more rich than you can spend right now. So I would recommend one spire. Uh, when, I, when I say double spire, it's that kind of shit where it's like, okay, you're maxed out and you want to go spire now, but you have 5,000 minerals and 3,900 gas. Like that would be okay to make double spire. And you have like five bases with like 90 drones or some shit. But the reason why I say it's not cool or it's not great to make double spire right now is simply this. To beat Sky Toss properly, you're going to make enough Corruptors, more than enough Corruptors, to one-shot a carrier. If you don't do that, you're going to never have enough Corruptors to win the fight overall. Like, you're never going to be like, let's just hypothetically say, okay, this is not exact, but let's hypothetically say it takes 20 Corruptors to kill a carrier. And let's say you're fighting 12 carriers, which is, uh, 12 carriers is 6 supply per carrier, and 12 times 6 is uh, 72, right, I think? Um, Matt, yeah, that's right. So, that's 72 supply of carriers. You're never going to be like, well, it, it takes 20 corruptors to one-shot a carrier, so I'm going to make 20 corruptors. Or, uh, uh, yeah, so I'm going to make 40 supply of uh, corruptor because it's 2 supply corruptor. You're never going to expect a 40 supply corruptor army to beat a 72 supply carrier army because if you do, you might kill the first carrier, and then by the time you kill like your third carrier, you're going to be like, all oh, my corruptors are fucking dead already because I just don't have enough. Because it's just not even close to the amount of power those armies have. But if you instead, if you make like, let's say, let's say Protoss has 100 supply of uh, of carrier or air. And let's say you have almost an equivalent value to that of air yourself. Let's say he's got 100 supply of air and you have like 90 supply of air, which is like 45 corruptors. 45 corruptors way more than enough to one shot a carrier and this also includes if you have zero weapon upgrades and he has level three armor and shields you would still one shot a carrier so what i'm saying is if you're broke like you are and you actually need the money it's more worth your time more worth your money to just get one spire and only get carapace because carapace for you is actually massive because you reduce a ton of damage your corruptors take which makes them last longer 
which keeps them above the threshold to one shot longer. Uh, but Devil Spire, all that does, all the only thing a weapon upgrade does, it's great for mutas. But if you're not going mutas, irrelevant. But it's super good for mutas. But for Corruptor, the only thing a weapon upgrade does for a Corruptor is it makes you have a easier to hit threshold of one shot potential when you have like one less Corruptor or two less Corruptor. Would you like with like sense. Yeah. yeah if like that the threshold if, yeah if the threshold was like let's say it's twenty corruptor now it's like with plus one weapons now it's nineteen, but <laughs> if you're broke and you can't really afford double upgrades very easily and now your corruptor count overall is just going to be a lot lower, not worth what the cost is. It's just it's way more okay. worth just having more and having them last longer because they're tankier. Okay, that makes total sense. Uh, but yeah, if you're rich, you can get both. That's fine. Um. So, yeah, but uh, the fact you're going Spire, I love it. That's what you should be doing. So right now, the whole game plan should be bounce around him. Do not engage him ever. Also, I think you just saw those DTs. And I don't know if you backed up. Because yeah, I did. I was like, yeah. I'm out of here. Yeah. You, got, you got good eyes. A lot of people don't see that shit. But I, I, I just saw those. And I saw you backing up. So I was like, oh, I wonder if he sees them. Uh, and the, the now, the amount of static that you have now, it is a lot. But I would say it's more or less okay because... At this stage of the game, it's okay to make static D. The only thing I'd be, I'm kind of scared for you on, and that I would say I would want you to do better, is don't stop droning, or don't drone back down by spinning them all on static D and back into the 70s. Try to keep this shit in the 90s. And like like high 80s to like maybe 90. Like 92 or 94 would be okay as well. And the reason why I say that, the reason why I say that is because the way you should be playing this game is shaving Protoss apart. Like... Like, you ever seen a movie where, like, a samurai is, like, he doesn't just, like, always kill the guy in one hit. Sometimes he, like, he, like cuts off, or, like, cuts, like, fucking ten times on the side of his body and, like, disables him, and then he fucking kills him. Like, it, that's how you should be playing fucking Zerg vs. Protoss. I'm not even kidding. Like, if you go for the kill every time you fight Protoss, you are fucking crazy. Like, the Protoss is either, either really bad or you're insane. Uh, one of those is happening, but that should not be how it works. That makes sense, man. That's helpful because... I feel like in this game, if anything, like I had good map control and position, and I dove in on him. Maybe I'll thinking of the Yakuza that does that. Like just trying oh. to end it. Yeah, you should. You should definitely not be trying to end the game with Protoss right away. That do, it doesn't work because Protoss per supply value is more efficient than Zerg. That's not Zerg's strength is not Death Ball. That's Protoss's strength. The strength of Zerg is Remax. Protoss can if you if you wipe out. A whole carrier army. Protoss is like, fuck, give me like four minutes. I need to recover. But if you wipe out a whole corrupt army, Zerg is like, what? They died? Because they're already back. Like, I just remaxed them in one fucking second. Because I have 80 larva, and I made 45 of that into corruptors by holding down one button on the keyboard, and I was rich enough to afford it. I, they're all back again. So Zerg, and Zerg can do that with any fucking unit. There's no, like, restrictions there. So Zerg 100% has remax potential better than any other race. So the way you'd want to play against Protoss when they're trying to play a death ball is you trade a little bit out. Like you t you like you engage it, but you don't kill it. You just engage it. You might lose a little bit, but you like fucking shave off two carriers or something like that. And then you do it again on the other side and then you do it again on the other side and then you do it again on the other side. It, it might not be carriers per se, but maybe it's a Nexus. Maybe it's some probes. Maybe it's a fucking uh, couple void rays. Maybe it's a few disruptors. Something you're shaving him apart a little bit, and after you do this enough and you wear him down a little bit, then you're like, he's like limping around over there, like a fucking injured Protoss player. And then you're like, okay, now it's time to fucking kill him because I actually can now. And it's not like I'm fighting him at full power because if I fight him at full power, he's gonna fucking destroy me. So, if that's yeah. any Zergs out there that play like that, you're making your life way harder if you play to kill your first attack every time. That's not how it should be. The only time it should be like that is if you have a massive advantage in supply, which means you just like out macro the shit out of them, and then that's obviously fine. But if you're a similar supply and their army is death ball oriented, you don't just kill immediately. That's very hard to do. So yeah, your static D is definitely uh, going to own the shit out of DTs. The only thing, the only critique I could give you on these is maybe relocate them a little bit to surround the hatchery as opposed to being super far in front of it because if this guy was really annoying and he saw this 
he could run into there or blink into there or something. Just if he got a DT passed, he could hold position to DT like right there. And it would literally invalidate these two mineral patches. And you'd know spines are in range to kill that. So it would just be a nuisance for you to deal with. And uh, your, your, your queen could deal with it. But like, let's say if drones were there, it would take the queen so long to kill it that you'd probably lose like seven drones for that. And it would just be like, fuck, well, that's bad. It's just a waste. And, and like the spines are just doing nothing. So some spines in the middle line too would be really, really nice for you. Cool. Yeah, do it for all your bases too. It's, it's very important. I think I just, uh, I played a couple games where Protoss was separating their army and attacking me on two sides, and I started being like, I don't want to deal with this, I'm building spine crawlers, so I think I've gotten a little out of control with it. One way to deal with that really well, not even kidding, is, uh, I mean, if you have spines as well, you can um, have them located in annoying spots, like you can put spines like between mineral lines and shit, between mineral patches as well, to make it more annoying to have also some of them get good uh, annoying positioning. But one way to deal with Protoss, if you have good creep spread like you do, send your army to deal with the Protoss, the main brunt of what the Protoss is, and then send either Lings or Roaches. Roaches in the early game phase is fine. In the late game phase, send Lings. Just be like, you know what I'm going to do? 25 supply of Lings right now. Rally over here to these hatcheries because I see Protoss marching across the left side of the map. Like if you saw like 12 Zealots going like this across the left side of the map and they just disappeared in the fog of war. And you're like, he's pushing here, though, as well. Fuck. Like, I have a, a push, and I just saw 12 Zealots cross. Be like, cool. 25 supply, Lings, run right there. Support those spines. And army, go defend this army over here. And then you can zone out his army with your army, and you don't even have to look at the spines. Your Lings and your spines will just annihilate Zealots, which is also a really important reason why every Zerg late game should get Adrenal Glands and melee upgrades. Very good. Oof, yeah. <laughs> As weird as it sounds, as weird as it sounds, this Carapace upgrade only has one purpose, and it's if you're going to go Hydras versus Air. And if you already think to yours, and I, this is what I think, and if you think this as well, if you think Hydras are not as good of a choice against Air as Corruptors are, and like, let's say Viper, like Spire Viper, which I think that's also a much better choice against Air than Hydras are, especially if it's got like, hy like Hydras versus Air plus Disruptor Colossi. Uh, if that's how you want to play it out, then the Carapace upgrade against Protoss is meaningless because the only time a Carapace upgrade is worth value against Protoss, besides when it's Hydras versus Air Units, is basically Zealot versus Zergling. And Zerglings already dismantle and fucking delete Zealots once you have Adrenal Glands with uh, melee upgrades. Like, equal supply investment of like four Lings to one Zealot, that's equal mineral patch or mineral amount investment equal numbers of that when it's plus equal equivalent weapon upgrades so it's like two weapons versus two weapons three weapons versus three weapons but zerg has adrenal and zealots have charge adrenal always wins in the end fourlings always beat one zealot like they trade more efficiently so like you don't even need the like carapace again is it's similar concept to the double spire it's totally fine to get once you're done with melee and you're rich because it will make Lings better against Zealots. It makes Zealots... Once you have equivalent upgrades of Zealot upgrade weapon to Zerg upgrade armor, it makes Zealots have to hit Zerglings three times instead of two times. It also, once you have only at level three, only at level three, it makes a Photon Cannon have to kill Lings in three hits rather than two hits. So it does change those two things. But if you ever have less Carapace than weapon upgrades to zealot and if you think it's going to take you a long time to recover that to get up to plus three weapon shields or uh, sorry plus three carapace to like if you think that like if you're not thinking to yourself oh yeah this game's easily going to go for 10 more minutes and you're about to start plus one armor it's not even worth it because if you're not if you're never going to get plus three armor to actually benefit from that and they already have plus three weapons plus one and plus two are meaningless they're fucking meaningless they don't do anything uh, like, people like to think armor is armor, and it's great, right? I'm just tankier. But in StarCraft 2, there are breakpoints, and it does nothing versus Archons. It does nothing versus Adepts. It does nothing versus uh, uh, Immortals. It does nothing versus Storm. It does nothing versus Colossi. It does nothing versus... Uh, what the fuck else do they have? 
the other guy, a Dark Templar. Like these units have breakpoints that are the same either way for units that they're good against and what they're designed to kill. So it it just it it's only good if you have plus three, and you can afford that. And it's like, but it's nowhere near as good as plus three weapons. So the point I'm trying to make here is the the, the reason why I'm telling you this: if you want to go double evo against Protoss, totally fine. But I would recommend going weapons and weapons for all yeah. the way to level three instead of getting Carapace because that would make Lings for in game really fucking effective. And Lings on in game are so good because they don't cost gas. So you can get all the gas units in the world that you want and still also mix in some Zerglings here and there. That'll just be fucking crazy good too. All right. So his army's growing. And your army, the problem with your army right now that a lot of Zergs struggle with, well, not even Zergs, a lot of players struggle with this, is you're taking way too long to get rid of crappy supply and get better supply in because you can now afford it. But you have such a low corruptor count and you have such a low count of things that are like, like how many roaches and hydras do you have? You have two roaches, which is not much, which is fine. But you have 17 hydras and this unit sucks at this point. You definitely want to get rid of them. And you'd want them to be either hydras or maybe lurkers if you were confident that they weren't going to die to disruptor shots or maybe even zerglings at this point because zerglings would be super good here too if they had upgrades like melee and, and adrenal because they could get all over the ground units here because this is just stalkers there's no colossi here which is what lings would fall against and there's no archons here which is another thing that lings struggle against a little bit it's just like stalkers and disruptors and uh that's really mostly what his ground army is it's all like if i take out the Stalker and the Disruptor, ground-wise, he has one Adept. And he has one Immortal and two Zealots. That's like nothing. So if you had like 60 Lings swarming this, the Carriers aren't going to kill it because they're going to be preoccupied with the Corruptor. And then you're just going to start killing off all of his fucking ground units here. And the only way you can kill the Lings is if he like meticulously micros Disruptor shots to be on the edge of his army to try and kill Lings. If he, like, clips his own units, he'll kill them, too. It would just be a good trade. And it costs no gas to make those links. It would just be really efficient. And it would make it really easy as well for your Corruptors to get in and just fucking dive bomb all these carriers. Like, a perfect engage. This is what I would recommend. A perfect engage here would be pure Corruptor Ling Viper. And you just A-move the, the, like, you, like, move in. <laughs> you uh, get your lings, like maybe move command past them for a second so you get a nice surround really fast so they don't get stuck and bottlenecked for a second. And then you just let the lings A move the rest of the fight. Maybe throw like three parasitic bombs on his carriers, on three different carriers, and move command your carriers, or move command your corruptors into his carriers so that he, your corruptors are like sitting inside the parasitic bomb. I screwed that up in this game. Like I, I kept parasitic bombing him and not dive bombing on top of him and it was just like... <laughs> If you don't do that, the better option would be abducting. Okay, okay. But abducting would be... The only reason why abducting would be good is if you think you can't engage this. But if he doesn't have Storm and he doesn't have Archon, there is no reason why Corruptors can't engage this. The only thing here that becomes a nuisance for the Corruptor is the Stalker. And a Stalker would struggle so fucking hard versus Zergling. Because yeah, the only... have, like, maxed out Cracklings, basically. Yeah, because... Exactly. Uh, because a Stalker is really good against Corruptor... But a Stalker is really shit against a Zergling, and everything else in his army is shit against a Zergling. There's nothing in this army that's actually going to just, like, deal with Zerglings really well. Yeah, yeah so, like, right there, I would have, honestly, I, what I would have recommended you to, you to do, if I was watching you play this game, even if you don't have Zerglings there, I would have told you, dive the carriers. Fuck it. Like, right here, when you backed off. I would have said, no, don't run away. No, 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 no. If I was watching you right now, I'd be like, no, don't, don't, don't turn. Get in there and go target fire those characters. Like, don't lose all your Vipers, but like send your Corruptors in and get rid of your Hydras. Like send those in too. Let them kill some Interceptors or some Disruptors if they move far too far forward. Don't even micro the Hydras, just A-move them. But send those Corruptors in and focus fire his carriers. Like you don't have to, you don't have to micro it in a way where it's like, move on to the Parasitic Bomb. Just focus fire. Because if you kill even, like, two carriers right now, and your economy is better than his, you can remax faster, and you can shave him apart. 
because your yeah. your problem right now is definitely not your ability to max because you have the money to do it already right now. Your problem right now is not allowing him to grow a death ball. So if you back off, all that's going to happen is Protoss is going to grow in supply. And unit, more units are going to group up with that are strong as fuck. And then it's going to make the death ball that much more deadly. So now his, his death ball just grew with some immortals and another carrier. Which is better than what he had before. And then once again right there. You didn't kill much. The carrier count grew again. It was four when you, or sorry, it was like five when you fought it down here. And then it turned into six with that one that rallied over. And now it's seven after this fight. Is that eight? No, it's eight now. It's now eight because another one just came in as well right now. Like one came in during the fight or something and another one just arrived too. So now his carrier count was like double basically what it was down here when you were fighting yeah. in this area. Because you're, you're getting intimidated and you're backing off repeatedly. Like, basically, to put it simply, you're so... Like, if there, there's priorities, right? You're thinking to yourself, okay, you might not believe this, but this is what's happening. The priority of micro right now, you're putting all the priority on this unit right here. The disruptor. You're like, fuck. Disruptor shots. Run back. Your whole army runs back. And you're like, fuck that. And it's like, wh why are we going... Like, what is the reason why you're so afraid of the disruptor shots and the reason why is because you're of your hydras because that's the only unit on the ground that you have at this point like you have two roaches and all hydras uh and no lings so it was like all right i don't want my hydras to die but in reality those hydras are dead weight in your army anyways and the fact that they're being prioritized making your corruptors turn around all that's doing is wasting corruptor time and allowing carriers to just grow and grow and grow and it's also giving carriers free time to pick shit off like a Viper here and there, a Corruptor here and there, because they are doing damage while you're running around a lot like that. Once you see a certain Disruptor count it, with carriers, you just got to ditch Hydra Lurker and go into Ling. What, once you see the, the process of it starting, you got to ditch Hydra Lurker. The fact that you made Double Spire was great. I, or like, the, not maybe not Double Spire because you weren't super rich, but the fact that you made a Spire was great. Like the fact that you wanted to transition, I was like, "Fuck yeah, I'm on board with this." Wrong. But the fact, <laughs> but the fact that you kept going hydras and kept prioritizing hydras was not great, because that all that does is you're like, like a hydra performance-wise here is worth maybe one fifth of what a corruptor is worth. A corruptor is worth so much more value in this situation because it doesn't even have to give a shit about disruptor. And it completely massacres carriers if there's no Archon and no Templar. And he has neither one of those. So you you're, you could have killed this carrier count like multiple times over by now if you just used the air units properly. Uh, and then the ground units, if, if you take out this air army altogether from this army, so if I like green box this whole army, and then I shift out just the carrier, it's one stalker, a lot of disruptors, and two immortals. Like this could die to anything. You could kill it with... Anything on mass ground, roaches would probably be the scariest, or like Roach Hydra would probably be the scariest thing to kill it with because they ball up from range and get killed by disruptors. But like if you went mass lings, for instance, you could easily just dismantle this in seconds. You could make mutas and kill this. You can make anything you want and kill it. You can make brood lords and kill this. Exactly. So many things could kill this, yeah, exactly. So the that's definitely not the like this is not the priority because it's so counterable. That's the priority, because this can kill everything of yours if you're not careful. That you don't like yeah. get rid of it and you don't let it keep growing. So you actually take the fight this time and you kill a solar army. Perfect. Now, wonderful. You just killed a solar army, air army. But now there is a thing, a mistake you can make every once in a while as a Zerg player. This is more advanced and this doesn't happen all the time, but you got to be very cautious and you got to be very aware of the priority here. And you just definitely over prioritized carriers now because you're too, too many corruptors now <laughs> yeah <laughs> well you uh you you made no lings at all this is why i like lings so much because they don't cause gas but and they all, they're also really good at killing shit that is just like if it, certain armies just fall apart to lings like in seconds and so does certain economies like 
If you find an expansion, you can just wipe it out with Langs, no problem. Uh, but you just made all corruptor. Like your whole army is corruptor now. And you have 20. How many corruptors do you actually have? You have 24 corruptor. You have a viper. You killed all the carriers, no problem. But now the Protoss still has a ground army and you have no lings. And Hydras and Roaches aren't the greatest unit to make here simply because they cost gas. And gas is like a valuable resource that you would want to keep for Corruptor. And if you have too many Corruptor, I would say you'd want to turn some of them maybe into Broodlords to help deal with the ground units. Because Broodlords would be great. They're yeah. super good at dealing with everything except Blink Stalker. And you want it once again, Zerglings, very good against Stalkers. So Zerglings are like the most complementary unit to aspire not only in terms of resource cost but also in terms of weaknesses like for instance uh a mulisk is great against like a zealot it's great against an adept and then what's not good against an adept or a zealot is a oh, zergling like yeah. in general early game like eventually they're fine when they have a journal glance chat. but uh I'm having a rough day at work but uh once one sec dude sorry thank you for the sub um, Lings essentially like I don't have to go through all the examples but Lings are really good against the counters to a Muta and then the counters to a Ling Mutas are really good against like so, and, it's, and the same can be applied to Corruptors and the same can be applied to Broodlords because Lings are just great support at just doing max fucking DPS when they're not being prioritized to be killed by whatever the fuck is there uh, because they're super mobile they can get in and out really easy peasy and uh, they, they can also force fights to happen, which is also really good for like certain builds. Like if you have broodlords, what you want you to do, what you want to happen is you want to take a fight with your opponent's army, but you don't want them to run around you. And lings are really good at forcing that to happen because you can kill their expansions from range and just fucking force them into bad spots. Yeah. So lings are super good to I, abuse, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. I got over, I think I got overly Yo. excited. Eno Scared, thank you very much for the nine. Death ball with carriers. Army. I'll play it's like the thing, thing in a second thing for me. Like I usually just lose to the VS army. Yeah. Um, and now, now I'm like totally overreacting, and like that's not like I'm not taking in enough scouting information and like making too many decisions that are just like, all right, I'll spam corruptors and yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. You gotta li listen, listen to what you're saying and get an actual ground army too yeah because like it would be easier like so it's easier to like understand how many cryptos you need when you see the air army and you saw it multiple times but the only problem was you never actually engaged it properly so it grew and it grew and it grew and it grew and it got to a point where you kind of panicked about it and you were like fuck it make corruptors and kill it like holy shit this army is still here it's a problem carriers are fucking crazy strong and then you, you did you made plenty to kill it but it's like It'd be like someone saying, pour me a glass of water, and the, the cup of water holds like eight ounces, and you pour an entire gallon into it, and you're like, take your fucking water. <laughs> like, it's like, okay, wait, <laughs> way too much. Don't need that much. That's uh, a lot. Um, so if you actually were managing their carrier count a bit more, it'd be easier to like see how many corruptors you actually need. And then also, if you were managing the, the ground army a bit more, like with Lings, this situation would be happening right now. Because you would it, it would not just be engaging nothing because like realistically the Protoss is not losing his ground because every time he, he does get engaged he's just throwing disruptors at hydras and then the hydras are just getting blown up and then not much dies for Protoss okay so now he's going back into carrier disruptor uh stalker again once again great for ling corruptor Lings with upgrades, dismantle stalkers and disruptors. Corruptors, like you just saw, obliterate fucking carriers. Seems like I could have attacked there. You, I, if you had, I, it's like dicey. You kind of can, but like, like you'll definitely kill his air units, and then it's just stalkers versus Ling, Lurker, Hydra. But I, if, if he gets good disruptor shots and wipes out a lot of your Hydras and the Lurkers. And his stalkers have to fight against zerglings like with cannon battery support. I definitely think he could still defend that shit. Gotcha. Um, the the whole reason as well why I'm not a big fan of you still making hydras right now and still making lurkers is because he is hard countering you, and you're kind of like follow like you're trying to beat like, um, you're trying to beat a rock with a pair of scissors right now essentially. Like he's that, that is not good for Zerg to make those units against disruptors the entire time, because he always has an edge if he micros 
better. Like, Lurkers are, they're probably the best thing you have because they can actually beat Disruptors with Micro, but that only makes sense when Lurkers are your main priority, which is what we talked about earlier, because I did say Lurkers can beat Disruptors with Micro, but the last thing in the world you want to be doing is microing the lurkers as your priority when he has superior tech to that, which is carrier with corruptor. Corruptor should absolutely be your priority now. And you don't have 5 million APM. You can't micro everything as a priority, which is why it has to be a priority of something. Like there's always something that's going to be more attention focused and something that's going to be less attention focused. Like, and you could deal with this entire ground army by just saying, hey, Lings, go fucking kill that shit and forget about it. Yeah, it's bumming me out to think about like how if I built like, uh, all link corruptor viper like four minutes ago i would have easily won <laughs> yeah and i'm not even kidding you don't even need viper here like viper is a nice touch it helps break down protosses that get too much air or it's it really helps to break down protosses that are way too turtly and it's really hard to find damage without losing a lot because you can abduct them out of it and shit but realistically with the way this guy's playing you could have just had corruptors and no air at all and then just had like maybe 20 corruptors or like 25 corruptors a lot of links and you would have just broken his bases apart and broken his armies apart repeatedly okay that makes sense and a, 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 the second part as to why i was saying it's i besides priorities of units another reason why you don't really want to make units that are like kind of already getting countered a lot especially if they cost gas is because right now all you're doing is you're dipping into your remax bank account you're like let's make lur more hydra lurker which could have been another round of like 20 corruptor Instead, now it's like this unit that's part of your army now, which is just getting countered by disruptors again. So it, it depletes your bank really fucking fast when you play like this because you're playing really inefficient. Okay, yeah. Makes sense. But the, the composition of Ling Lurker Hydra is totally fine as long as your Protoss opponent... Like, I, the, again, the thing that I, I think made it expire wasn't the disruptors because you can deal with that. Again, if, if this could be your priority, it was the fucking carriers is what made that expire because this becomes your like if you look at Protoss army and you go okay stalker disruptor carrier stargate shit what am i more scared of here almost every zerg is going to say the fucking carriers and like if he gets to sky toss that's fucking more of a problem than stalkers and a few, some disruptors behind it because it's like supreme tech and it's it's definitely overall like got more power to it so when you think about what is the scariest part of his army, that's the priority, and that's what the counter to that is what you're supposed to be microing the most. And then everything else is kind of like, what would be a good thing here to like throw at it? And lings for this situation would have been fucking super good. Small amount of lings I have now, I can already tell is just going to be more effective than. I'm gonna lose everything to disruptor shots. Oh, 100 percent, yeah. Like you're, you're gonna like the lings are gonna get on here, do a little bit of damage, and he's gonna throw disruptors and wipe out your lurkers and maybe your hydras at the same time. Yeah. Like all your hydras instantly just fucking evaporated. Yeah, they're, they're dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And your lings are still attacking. Uh, like if just imagine if you had ten times the amount instead of having like eight, if you had eighty, which is only forty supply, and you yeah. fully surrounded him, and if he throws disruptor shots, he's like killing stalkers while killing lings. And then more lings just fill in the gap and surround him again. And then just kill everything in a surround. I get. I think I got really impatient now and I just kind of sit on a different game. Yeah. Well, at this point, you still can win the game. But the problem that you're having now, that's a big problem too, is for the last like 10 minutes, you haven't expanded again. You took this base, I think at like 6 minutes. And you didn't yeah. saturate it at 6 minutes, but you took it at 6 minutes. And ever since that point, you have never once built another base. In the last 13 minutes, you have not built a base. And in the last like 10 minutes, you have not saturated another base. So you're definitely running out of money. And uh, this is uh, this is like playing like it's an all-in. Yeah, it's it's because you're confused about priority, and you're complicating, you're overcomplicating the fucking fight so goddamn much that like you're now going. Oh yeah, I haven't macroed for 13 minutes. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, I guess I guess I'm fucking broke now. <laughs> yeah, this sucks. So I mean, if you just uh, what we just talked about, apply that shit, it'll help a lot for sure, for getting you, you know, the, where you want to be in a better way. I did say I was gonna do an example build, but 
I, I don't actually have the time to do it right now, but I want to explain what I think an example build would be, okay? And then yeah, totally. it would just be like, because it would go a lot faster if I do it like that. So generally speaking, what I, what I would want you to do for yourself to make your life really easy against Protoss would be 16 hatch, 18 gas, 17 pool, mine zergling speed, and then take two drones off. Try to remember, like, and we can watch this again, but remember what we talked about with Adept and Stalker out of Gateway. And if you think Adept, make six lings or four or six lings like it's a Reaper at that point. If you think it's a Stalker, skip the fucking lings. Just skip them. And again, if, you, if you're not, if you're confused, if you're like, wait, what? what's the timer? We talk, I talked about it a lot in your first Overlord Scout at the start of this lesson uh, with the 30 second, 20 second Chrono Boost bullshit. Um, and then... Well, once you decide or not decide to make your lings, make just drones. One drone on gas, all drones, all drones, all drones. You take your third base at like 28 supply against Protoss. Or like 26, 28, anywhere in that realm of time is fine. Um, while effectively spinning your larva. And then uh, <clears throat> once you're at like 320 to 330, always build up to about 14 to 16 Zerglings. Okay. And you can add this in with like your existing early lings. If you made an adept and you were like, okay, I have six already. I got to go to 16. Just make 10. And then you're good to go. Don't make another 16 and go to 22. Just make up to 16 lings. 14 is also okay. <clears throat> Around 330. Like 320 to 330. And what this allows you to do is really do those zergling scouts we talked about, which are very important at that point in the game. And also deny third bases if you catch it when you're scouting which you should actively be trying to scout like every 20 to 30 seconds up until five minutes. So from 3.30 to five minutes, you should be scouting every single like 20 to 30 seconds nonstop around his base outside and really making it harder for him to expand. And also trying to scout what the fuck he's doing tech-wise. with like, Outside the base, like check the door. What does he have in the doorway? Like No units or a lot of units? Uh, is it sentries? Is it adepts? Zealots? Nothing? Uh, <clears throat> stuff like that. That's we Again, we talked about that a lot earlier too. So... Um, don't need to do it all over again. But those legs are going to be really helpful for you, and they're going to be annoying for Protoss. And behind that, drone your fucking ass off. And as soon as soon as you have three mineral lines fully saturated, immediately start a fourth base, and immediately to start three more gases. So you're going to go up to four gases in total on four bases. And then from there, reactively decide, do I need... Gas units here to not die. Like, does he have Stargate? Is it Stargate focused? Or is it ground focused? If it's ground focused, you can literally get away with that with Roachling and drone all the way up to like 80 fucking drones, 85 drones, and make pure Roachling harass. Pure Roachling harass. Pure Roachling harass. Be aggressive. Don't let him have the map. Don't let him have a fourth base. Again, we, we've referenced this earlier too. If your Roachling was made faster and you were more aggressive with it, you would have made it way harder for him to just have money and expand as, as easy as he did. And it would also give you scouting because he has to defend with something and you would see what he's doing while you're attacking him because he's defending his base with it. And you're really trying to kill expansions, not kill his main base. And then, uh, if, if so this is like off four gas. If, if he has tech though, like air, really fucking early, immediately start more gases. Like take the other four gases on your... Uh, four bases you have because at this point you'll only have four four gas on four base and there's eight gas total so if you think it's air focused you're like I need to start a spire or something immediately take all fucking eight gases and stick around like 85 to 90 drones and then you can go into like roach corruptor uh, roach ling corruptor ling corruptor uh, you could even go hydras if you wanted to again the hydras are an option I just think they're weaker so if you want to go corruptor I would say that would be an overall better choice but the whole point of this is this is going to allow you to have a way better economy and an opener. And it's going to allow you to have a lot more option going into the mid game. Not because of the tech you built, but because of the economy that you've given yourself and the starting point that you have. So you could go Roachling into Hydra. You could go Roachling into an Infestation Pit. Roachling into uh, more Roachling. Roachling into Ravager. Roachling into Hydra. Roachling into Lurker. Roachling into Bane, Roachling into Muta, Roachling into Corruptor. Roachling should be a baseline versus Protoss because if you don't do that, it's like, think about like Hellions with Terran and Zerg. That's like what Protoss can do to you at any point in time with Adepts. And if you don't make Roaches, Adepts are a fucking nightmare 
And the same th the same thing can be said about charge lots. Uh, Prados does actually it does not need to all in you with charge lots, but they can totally ruin your fucking day if you don't have fucking roaches uh, to deal with that. Because banes are very counterable when it comes to micro. They can just split up their units and suddenly banes get horrible connections uh, versus that. <coughs> so overall, roachling is your baseline that builds a con that gets your economy going, and then anything is possible, whatever the fuck you want. Just as long as you can afford it, that's all it really needs to happen. And with Roachling as a baseline, that's not only a key access to your economy, it's also an access point to controlling his and also getting a read on his composition. And if you somehow still can't get a read on it, make the Overseer like we talked about. If you're like, fuck, what is he doing? I don't know. It's five minutes. He could be fucking owning me. He has not expanded. He has not tried to take an expansion with units to defend it. What the fuck does this mean? Overseer, like we talked about earlier too, would be great to like get in there and figure it out. Like, oh, he's going fucking five Tempest in his base right now. Okay, interesting. Something like that. Sound good? Yeah, no, that makes total sense. Okay, good. Good shit. Yeah, yeah, that's all awesome. Do you have any uh, final questions about anything we talked about? And if you do, any, any uh, question, please feel free way to practice other than the ladder is there anything that you do yeah, uh you totally can uh like if i cared a lot about like being as good as i could at this game right now i would do this as well be nice to people if you don't know anyone on the ladder or that plays this game just be nice to people and try to get practice partners that you genuinely think are better than you if you do that if you if you actively play people who are better than you consistently Ladder will become a fucking joke, and you will constantly improve like way faster than just playing ladder only. So, hell yeah. Right. When, when I when I was a pro gamer, one thing I did was whenever I did not have someone on to uh, practice with, which I did a lot, but whenever I was just like, ah, oh, fuck it, I'll play ladder right now. I would always play Korean ladder, and whenever I played a Korean player, because the reason why I played there is because there was a higher density of good players there. And whenever I played a Korean player that was actually super fucking good, I wouldn't be like, fuck you, you suck. Can't believe I lost to you or some shit like that. I'd be like, hey, man, <laughs> you want to play again in, a, in a, a, a rematch? You want to do another game? I was like, you're really fucking good at bio or you're really good at Ling Bane micro, whatever. And if you want to play again, I totally would be down to add you and play some games. And if they're like, so a lot of times, if you're nice to someone, they'll be like, sure. Okay, sounds good. They're not going to be like immediately thinking you're talking shit, right? But if you're like immediately like, wow, you're so fucking bad. I can't believe I lost to you. Queue up again. Like They're not going to be like, okay, yeah, let's practice. <laughs> so, I'm getting better at that. Yeah, if you're nice to people, and because the thing is, there is literally no reason why someone who's better than you honestly should help you if they don't know you because it has, in the sense of like value for their time, it is no value for their time. If they're getting nothing out of it, like for you as a person, and also they're getting nothing out of it in terms of skill at the game, there's no reward for them to do it. But if you're just nice to somebody and you're like, hey, you want to, you know, do another game? Like, I, you know, whatever. Like, you'd be like I, I think you're really good. And it would be, I'd, you'd be really good practice for Terran for me or whatever. More people would probably say yes to that than you might think. And I actually had like, I don't even fucking know, like 10 fucking practice partners on Korea that weren't even pro gamers, but they were super good. I was like, this guy, who the fuck is this guy? Can't even read his name. I don't know who this is, but he's actually insane at like Protoss versus Zerg. And I play this, I don't play him every day, but like I might play him every now and again. And it's just like good practice because he actually makes me work for the win. I don't just show up and win because those are the worst games you can play. If you play ladder and you just win the game and you actually scratch your head being like, how the fuck did I win this? I shouldn't have won this game. That is the worst game for you because you don't have to try to win then, which is not good. And that's what's weird about ladder though, is, uh, and especially in Diamond 2, is sometimes I win so easily uh, and then I will just get destroyed by people with very similar MMR. And I'm just like, what is going on well, here? Well, like, right now... Sorry, I'm eating a Pringle. Right now, not going to lie, that might be a smurf. There's actually a lot of smurfing that goes on in StarCraft 2 nowadays because people are super bored. But that also might be someone who's just really good at one thing. So keep in mind too, 
this does actually happen. There might be someone who's really fucking good at killing Zergs with Adepts. But he really fucking sucks at Protoss versus Terran. And then you play him as Zerg and you go, this guy's not 4,500 MMR. Or he's not 4K. There's no way. But he's like really good at that build. And then he plays against a Terran right after you. And this Terran goes, this guy was so bad. There's no way he's 4K. Because he's really bad at that matchup. Like that does, like there are, there are definitely, not everybody is a well-rounded, perfect fucking circle of skill. And they're like exactly the same stats in every category. Like some people are just good at certain things and they're shit at other things. And then they just have to like work on their weaknesses over time. But like it makes you feel like they're way better than they are at certain points in time. For if you're the guy on the receiving end of what they're good at. But there are also smurfs that does also exist. Yeah. That makes total sense. I mean, and, and that that's why I'm trying to play a reactive macro. Just try to get better at, at like, overall StarCraft. I think reactive right macro. Just... Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, that was pretty much the thought, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, reactive macro, I think, is the best style, too, overall. Because it you have the most versatility as a player. Because you can play all styles with that. So I like that as well. That's definitely my style, too. But, like anyways. I said, at the beginning. I watched your bronze to GM, so I'm sure a lot of of it's based on you too. So I appreciate. Yeah, that's it, awesome. Man. Thanks. Yeah, no worries. I'm glad. I'm glad I could help, and I hope this coaching lesson helped as well. Uh, it was a good. You put. You submitted a good replay too. There was a lot of stuff we talked about. I think a lot of good stuff you could learn from. There was actually a lot of. I'm not gonna lie. There was a lot of weird high level shit that Zergs run into. That's problems like the corruptor overmake. That's not a problem as a low level Zerg really runs into very much. I feel like. That's a problem a player runs into when they have a good economy and they're like, fuck. Well, now what do I do with the supply? I'm going to die now because I just made all fucking corruptors and I overdid it and now I'm dead. And uh, yeah. But anyways, I will, uh, I'll post this, vet, uh, this lesson to YouTube by probably tomorrow. And then it'll be in my Discord under the YouTube channel just as like the next new post. Uh, and it'll be there forever. So, and if you want, I can also link it to you as well, privately, and do the, your, the message we have right now for the call. So you can just, don't have to look for it. I can just send it to you straight up. And then you'll have it forever. And then, fuck yeah. And there you go. All right. Well, hey, I appreciate you. And, uh, you know, uh, maybe I'll have another one for you in a couple of weeks and I'll be a little better. <laughs> Yo, it sounds good. Hey, I wish you the best of luck. Uh, definitely try to, really try to focus a lot on like the, the build order thing I said at the end here and also how to apply it throughout the whole lesson we talked about. Like, if you understand that shit, because I'm not going to lie, when I was just simply, super simple, like TLDR, fast explanation of what I saw personally, I was like thinking to myself, if this was like Masters Plus or like GM, there was like a bunch of points in the opener that you could have died on. Like, I was like, you could die here, you could die here, you could die here, you could die here, you could die here. And it's just because of the way the build was. It was just like an unpreparedness because it's just like, the, the, neither one of you is really pushing the other one to do anything which is why I try to stress that shit a lot but if you fix that stuff and you actually really understand it like we talked about it will help so much for you to just grow into that matchup like as a stronger player to be like okay well I really understand third bases and I actually can predict what the power of what you're going for is like capable of here I don't have to just go it's Protoss and Protoss is scary I need to deal with Protoss shit you can actually assess like how strong this particular Protoss is going to be at certain points in the game because you are reading what he's doing like very accurately because you're active with your units. Like for instance, that like drone count thing I to told you, that's very relevant. That's super important to know that. And uh, if you can actually always have a drone lead because you haven't lost drones, you should always feel like you're in control yeah. of the game. Yeah. All right, man. Well, I, uh, I hope you have a good rest of your night. Thank you again for doing a coaching lesson. And uh, all right, man. Yeah. And I, yeah. yo, take it easy, man. Much love. All right, guys. That has been a lesson with Jim, Mr. Jim, Jim son. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys had a good time. I actually uh, got to go feed Benji, the dog that was in my lap at the start of this. He was literally against my leg for like the last 20 minutes being like, please, please. And now he's walked around the corner and left. So I feel like he's sad. 
because he thinks I'm not going to feed him for a while. I'm absolutely going to go feed him right now. Um, so thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a good night. I hope this helps you in any way for yourself, any Zerg players out there, or if you're a Protoss player, maybe you understand the Zerg mindset a bit more now. But thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, good luck. Peace, guys.